Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new school year. It's Mr. Rops. And Mr. Co. And we are doing the first podcast of the year on simplifying surds. Okay, so Mr. Okay. Cole, I'm going to give you some numbers here, and I want you to see if you can tell me what's special about these numbers. One, four, nine, 16, 25, and it goes on and on and on. What's special about all these numbers, Mr. Cole? Okay, they look like the square numbers to me. They so, um, yeah, one times one, two times two. Right, two squared, three squared, four squared, and so on. And it goes all the way. We can keep on going if we want. So, this is a special, special list. I really like this, this list. These are my special numbers. I like these numbers because of surds. And what surds are, are things with that sign, the square root symbol, or radicals if you're American and, or, 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 or North American. What does this sign actually mean, Mr. Cole? So I guess it means what number do you multiply by itself, or what number do you square to get the number inside the, the square root? Right, so these numbers are special because if I put a 9 in here, the square root of 9 is 3, because it's, this, it's 3 times itself gives you 9. So this symbol is asking a lot of things at the same time. It's, a, it's really wordy to explain, but the idea is fairly straightforward that people can understand the idea. What number times itself gives you 9? Well, the answer to that is 3. And if we have numbers like this, it's fairly straightforward. But the tricky thing that happens is when we have scenarios where we have the square root of 32. There is no number that multiplies by itself to get 32. And so we're going to try and simplify this. In order to do it, we're going to look at the list here and think, what number multiplied, what, <laughs> how to explain this, <laughs> the 32, what number on this list multiplies by something to get 32? Well. I know if I look at this, I know that 4 times 8 is 32. And I want one of these numbers to be on our special list. And so that's square root of 4 times 8. The properties of SIRD says I can split these up to square root of 4 times the square root of 8. Well, I know the answer to this question. What is the square root of 4, Mr. Cole? Okay, so that's 2. And then I have square root of 8. And now I have to ask myself, are there any numbers that multiply to get 8 where one of those numbers is on this list? And okay. there, indeed there is. We could say now 4 times 2, which is equal to 4 times the square, or sorry, 2 times the square root of 4 times 2, which then we can say, well, 2 times square root of 4, I know that is 2 root 2, multiply, and I get 4 square root 2. Okay. And we have our simplified cert. That is as simplified as it can get. Now, you may ask, well, 4 times 8 is 1, but I could have done it a different way. I could have done this cert. Square root 32 is equal to, so I know, 16 times 2. 16 times 2. It's quite nice if you put this, the one that's a square number, if you put that first when you're simplifying it. That. It does help. And so I can break that up into the 16 times the root 2. The square root of 16 I know is 4, square root 2. And I end up with the same answer. So no matter which path you choose, you always should end up with the same, same value. You see, the bigger the square number that you, you find, the, the quicker it is, the less, less working out you have to do. So it's always worth just trying to think which is the biggest square number you can use to simplify. Okay, let's try another example. Let's consider now, if I take 2 square root 3 squared, and I want to simplify this. Well, if I think about that, I know that's the same thing as saying 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. And if I multiply these together, I get 4, that's the 2 times 2. You ain't got to do it, Philly. Oh, sorry about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that bit out. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Don't let me out. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Palfrey. <laughs>
So the 2 times 2 is 4. The root 3 times root 3, that becomes the square root of 9, because the 3 is multiplying inside the square root, which is 4. This value is 3, so 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay, so when you're doing 2 times root 3 times 2 times root 3, it's just important to realize you can just do that in any order. So you can times the 2s, and then you can just times the root 3s by each other as well. So another way you could look at it is you could go 2 squared, square root 3 squared. So that's 4, and if I square a square root, they cancel each other out, so that remains a 3, and I get 12. Yep. That's another way to consider it too. All right, let's try another example here. Uh, we're getting more difficult now. I'm going to do now square root of 3 times the square root of 15. So if I do that, well, with these, I can just multiply inside my thirds. So I can go, showing all the steps, that's 3 times 15 under one third, which is square root of 45. And so now I have to ask myself, what number multiplies get 45 where one of them is on that special list? Okay, so you might have your list written out at the side of the page, or you might just uh, be able to recall your, your thirds very quickly. All right. And if I look at my list here, what number can I use, Mr. Cole? What okay, number? so we've got 9. 9 times 5. 9 times 5. And it's just easiest to put the 9 first, break it up. And so now I have 3 root 5. And that's as simple as it can get. All right, we'll make it even harder now. Next example, I think this is actually D. Okay. So I can say now square root of 49x squared. Oh my. 9x squared, 48x squared over 27y cubed. Okay. okay. Hey. So, in doing this, if I look at these numbers here, can I simplify this fraction at all? This divides by 3. This also divides by 3. So if I divide them both by 3, I get 16x squared over 9y cubed. Now, I like that a lot. I can some break, square numbers. Right. I can break these up into parts. I can go square root of 16, square root of x squared, square root of 9, and the square root of y cubed. I can break them all into little squares. If I do that, well, square root of 16 is easy. That's 4. This one here, well, what number times itself gets you x squared? Well, that's going to be x. x times x is x squared over, this is 3. Now this one here is tricky. So I can say this is y squared times y. Is that, would that be how you would explain it there, Mr. Cole? Yeah, yeah, we could do that one. Okay. And so then I would go 4x over 3. This is y squared y, which is 4x this I know is y, square root y. And we'll okay. leave it as such. Any comments on that one? Or are we good? Um, yeah, we don't want to get into... <laughs> one more last example we can do. E part negative 2 square root of 12 a to the 4th b to the 5th. Okay, so in doing this all together I can break it up into three parts. I can go negative 2 is on the outside. I think about 12. 12 is 4 times 3. a to the 4th I can go as this, and then b to the fifth. Negative 2 still. This I can break up to root 4, root 3. Now, this one here, what's that going to be, Mr. Cole? Okay, well, um, the number, you, what you could times by itself to get a to the 4 would be a squared times a squared, right? Right. And so the square root of that is then a squared. Yep. Here, how am I going to break this one up? What can so I do for got, this? We've got b squared 
times b squared, that would give you b to the 4, and then you need to times that by b. Times b. Alright, so now I get negative 2, this is times 2, times root 3, times a squared, this is going to be b squared, and then I'm left with the root b at the end. Tie this all up, I can then take this one, this one, those four are not underneath the square root, so I can multiply them all together and get negative 4 a squared b squared. Mr. Root, I oh, know, sorry. And then <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the two roots I can put together and make a 3b underneath the square root. That is quite challenging. That uh, was a tough one.